Normally at this point, I'd speak to Stephen here on set, but he's not here today. He's at uh, Europe's biggest technology event. Some 50,000 startups, investors, and some of the biggest names in the industry are all mingling at the Web Summit in Portugal. And we can uh, find Stephen joining us from there now. Good morning, Stuart. As you come to me here, the sound checks are just happening on the main stage behind me. And that's where the biggest names attending this conference are speaking. Former French President Francois Hollande is among them. He'll be talking about innovation and his view for the future of society on the stage behind me later. There's also going to be discussions with the EU's Competition Commissioner, Margaret Vestager, about fairness in technology. And, of course, there are representatives of the world's biggest technology companies here, too. Uh, we're starting off on the main stage behind me here, today with a discussion uh, with one of the senior executives from Google about the future of artificial intelligence and augmented reality. Now, that was a topic that Stephen Hawking touched on in a special address that he made at the opening of the Web Summit last night here in Lisbon. Stephen Hawking saying that powerful artificial intelligence could be the best or worst thing to happen to society. It's a debate that's taking place really for many of those attending the Web Summit here today. And to talk about that a little bit further, I'm joined uh, by Rish Mitra, who's the CEO and co-founder of a company called Blipper. You use both artificial intelligence and augmented reality in your business. Are you concerned about what Stephen Hawking was warning about? I mean, Stephen Hawking has always maintained a very uh, dystopian view of artificial intelligence. Whereas an entrepreneur and also a fellow human being, I'm a natural optimist, and I really feel that artificial intelligence would actually more help the society. Like, keep in mind, by 2050, the world population is anticipated to be over 10 billion people. A lot of resources, and of course, healthcare is constantly improving, so there'll be a lot of people who'll be living longer. Uh, AI will play a significant role in efficiencies in health, business processes, agriculture, food tech, list goes on. Uh, and today, how our resources are structured and the ratio of education to illiterate people, there's so many factors in the society which no way just manual, a uh, human-based input could be able to solve those demands. Let's talk a little bit about Blipper. This is an app that allows you, or the app that you have, allows you to identify products using your phone's camera. Where, tell us how far that technology has developed for Blipper and what exactly you can do with it. So at Blipper, uh, our vision and mission is to index the entire physical world and give people more from the world they see. Uh, as humans, we just love to, or it's default within us to be curious and look at stuff. And we thought a very natural extension of that behavior is our devices, if they can look and understand the world in the same way. It's a very complex problem. It's like trying to mimic the human eye. So we've made significant progress where we're able to recognize entire cities, we're able to recognize landmarks, flowers, clothing and uh, nature and products and cars, but the world is a very big and complex place. I would say computer vision is still at its infancy and it'll be another like four to five years where very realistically, the everyday consumer will trust it enough to use it every day for all the things they see. Well, that issue of trust is something that people have with new technology. The idea that, you know, a pho you know by your phone that you could recognise a person, perhaps a place. How do you deal with sort of those privacy and security concerns around the technology of augmented reality? So, you know, uh, all these technologies, are of course, trained with existing data in the market. And, and it's, of course, the process is very ethical because users give you permission and when they agree to terms and conditions for that data. But on the other side, there would, of course, certainly be certain privacy concerns. What we do at our end is we're completely a permission-based company, so everything we use, we take the permission of the user. But, of course, uh, the user needs to feel comfortable about it. And today, there is no platform you use which you don't give that permission. Uh, and it's a trade-off between trust and value. Uh, and actually the user takes that call. But from our side, we take all precautions like most tech companies do. Do you think people really take account of things like terms and conditions and those sort of privacy concerns though? Are people not at this stage just used to agreeing to any kind of pop-up box that, that, that arrives when they're using these services? It depends on which part of the generation cycle you are. I mean, the younger people are much more comfortable with it because they've born into their data being shared and getting utility against it. 
but um, the slightly uh, older generations uh, uh, within technology are, are asking these questions, but at the same time, these are good questions to uh, answer, ask and answer, uh, because privacy is a big topic, not from trading privacy point of view, but actually security of the data point of view. How it is stored, if it gets hacked, what are the consequences? That's where the real precautions needs to be taken. What's next for Blipper? What's your next big milestone you're aiming for? So uh, one of the big things we're announcing today is uh, we're making uh, entire cities interactive. So we're launching a new product called AR City, where for the first time ever, this is the world's first, where you can walk around the world, explore it, and actually have full navigation routes superimposed on real roads uh, in 300 plus cities. And it's a new patented technology of ours called Visual Positioning System. Uh, it's got one meter accuracy over typical GPS is 200 meter accuracy. So it's a big step uh, forward in the field of uh, computer vision and augmented reality. Okay, Rish Mitra, CEO of Blipper, thank you very much for speaking to us this morning on France 24. A quick look at the markets before we go. In Europe, we've got the main share indices trading up at the start of trading, just relatively small grains across London, Paris and Frankfurt. Compared to Asia earlier, we had significant gains on the Asian markets, particularly in Tokyo and in Hong Kong as well. That's down to a rise in price of oil and commodities, helping energy shares there. And we'll have plenty more from the Web Summit here in Lisbon as the day goes on through here in France 24. We'll be watching all the developments here closely for you. But for now, it's back to you, Stuart. Thank you very much, Stephen. Looking forward to it.